Hello friends and welcome back. Today we are doing the July 2020 prediction. This tarot and oracle pick a card is all about the energies that will be coming up this July. So for today's reading I picked five piles. And the reason I picked five is because five is actually a number for change. It is a number that is associated with life changes, um, making important decisions, and so I felt like that was such an important number with everything that is going on in the world right now. But five is also a very important number in terms of adventure and freedom. It's also a very tangible number. You know, like we have our five senses, our five fingers, our five toes. Um, it is about taking that which we can sense and embracing it as we move throughout life. It's about being more mindful in our actions as we move forward. So that's why I picked the number five. So again, today we have these piles in front of you and I want you to use your intuition as to which pile is calling to you. Each of these top cards is a crystal. Um, it's actually from the Gem Oracle and um, I will be revealing that crystal momentarily, but I just want you to listen to your intuition as to which pile is calling to you. You can pick one pile or multiple piles. Your message may be spread out throughout multiple piles. So if you feel drawn to pick more than one, that's perfectly okay. I also do want to remind you that this is a general reading. So if anything doesn't sit right with you, if it doesn't resonate, just let it go, okay? Wasn't meant for you and that's perfectly fine. Not every message will resonate with everyone, okay? So we have pile one. Pile two, pile three, pile four, and pile five. Pile one is malachite. Pile two is natural agate. Pile three is blue halite. Pile four is sodalite. And pile five is jade. Very interesting. We have water and earth energy only this month. So again, take a moment. If the crystal has drawn you to a different pile, it may be worth reading or listening to the reading for both piles. Or just go with your gut as to which pile you think you should choose. The timestamps will be listed both in the description box and the top pinned comment. While you're down there finding the timestamp for your group, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you hit the bell, you'll get notifications for when I upload. And I do upload pick a cards every single Monday. So let's get started with pile one for those who picked the Malachite. Hello, Pile 1, and for those of you who picked the Malachite. So, Malachite is an earth stone, and astrology, it's associated with Jupiter. Astrologically, <laughs> astrology. Um, it is a stone that is really good for meditation, um, also for your emotions. If you're having, um, if you're feeling like overwhelmed with your emotions, or if you're feeling like you just, you need to be more grounded with your emotions, malachite is a wonderful stone to, whether, whether you carry it around in your pocket, get some jewelry, um, or a lot of women will put their, their crystals in their bra. Um, malachite is a good one for that. And um, yeah, it also, it's good for uh, reducing fears, and helping with verbal expression. So, you know, if you're feeling like you need a little more confidence in a situation that you're heading into, malachite might be a good stone for you to consider, okay? So we're gonna start with your tarot cards today. So we have the card of the Seven of Bows, which is Clarence, the Great Bear, the Four of Arrows, 
the lovers, the forest lovers, and the ace of vessels, the waters of life. Okay. Um, so very interesting energy here with the great bear right in the center. This um, this really speaks well with the protection and grounding energy that I was talking about with the Malachite earlier. The great bear, this is very much protective energy. This is, you know, protecting your home life, protecting your interests, protecting your, protecting yourself in, in many ways and feeling comfortable with the situation at hand with the circumstances. We have the seven of bows and the four of arrows here on either side. And it's almost like these cards are telling us that um, when we are feeling um, feeling uh, a dis-ease, when we're feeling uneasy about a situation, kind of like, you know, when, when that bear inside of us kind of uh, roars, we need to make sure that we are taking time to give ourselves the space that we need and also the rest and relaxation that we need. Taking time for yourself, taking time to think through your circumstances and to really allow yourself to process the information that is coming in. Um, if you're feeling overwhelmed, again, it being grounded is going to be a very important thing for you in July, making sure that you're not um, stretching yourself too thin, you know, being overbooked, overworked, like you really want to make sure you are not putting too much on your plate this month, okay? Uh, again, with the Ace of Vessels here, the Water of Life, this is making sure that you are coming first, making sure that you are taking time for you, because if you cannot take care of yourself, then you won't be able to help others. So if you're spending all your time focusing your energy on others, focusing your attention on others, whether this is for relationships or friendships or your your work, if you're feeling like you're being stretched too thin and you can't do it anymore, then make sure you are taking the time for you. With the forest lovers here, we could be talking about relationships, we could be talking about commitment, um, but this, I'm really sensing, again, this is a commitment to yourself. Instead of seeing these as two people, I'm almost seeing it more as different sides of yourself. And being understanding of these different aspects of yourself and being understanding of where you want to go and what you need to do to get there. It's like you need to be able to see yourself and your situation from an outside perspective. Uh, you know, when you're feeling really overwhelmed, sometimes it's really hard to break that pattern, break that habit and step out of it. You know, you just you might even be in a flow state of just go, 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 and you don't even realize that you're burning out. And it's almost like you need to listen to your higher self who's telling you, like, just, whoa, like, slow down. Take time for you. You need to step away from this. You need to give this space. And you need to focus on yourself. You need to put those barriers up, that wall up, so that you don't crash and burn essentially if you if you can't um, take this time for relaxation you're never going to transform you're never going to turn into this butterfly because you're just going to be way too exhausted um, when a butterfly or a moth comes out of the chrysalis it has to take time it can't fly right away it has to take time to um, to dry its wings and to learn how to use the, the flight muscles to flap its wings. A butterfly will sit there flapping its wings, drying them out after emerging from its chrysalis for hours, perhaps even days, before it actually takes off. So, you know, like this is, this is you. You need to dry your wings. You need to take that time, okay? Um, and with, this, with the great bear... And the lovers, again, I've seen this more as 
your conscious self and maybe your higher self. This could even be your subconscious. But combining it with the Great Bear, this is also um, removing judgment from yourself. I feel like maybe you've been too hard on yourself. You've been too judgmental to yourself. And so you need to step back and observe yourself from this other point of view to see the bigger picture, to see what's really going on, okay? Um, let's pull these cards. Breathe <laughs> goes really well with that rest and flexible. Yeah, um, not committing yourself to too much, you know, being flexible with your time, flexible with your commitments, taking time to breathe, taking time to meditate, taking time for yourself. Um, it's interesting how she is on this lily pad, just out in the water alone by herself. There is there is clearance, there is space, not crowded in anywhere. There's there, it's lots of open space. Um, there's also a lot of balance here. Like you know, we've got the green and the pink, the green and the red, same color scheme here, and so this is. You know, they're, they're contrasting colors. They're opposite colors on the color wheel. So again, it's like you need to focus on kind of not necessarily seeing just one or the other. You know, the, the red or the green, the black or the white, the positive or the negative. Like what is in between those? We have a lot of indication of the, of the contrast. And it's almost like that you, you might even be really feeling like you're drawn to one side or the other and being very defensive of that opinion. So this month, this coming July, I want you to really be focused on learning and growing around your opinions and not being afraid to admit that maybe it's not so cut and dry, not so black and white. Okay. There may be some variance in between and um, learning and educating yourself about the opinions and not being afraid to admit if you were wrong, um, not being afraid to hear the other side of the story. And I mean, this other side of the story might even be within yourself. You know, when you hear yourself talking negatively about yourself, maybe it's time to think, well, what are the positive aspects about me in this situation? Okay. Then your moon all your moonology card says a fiery climax approaches full moon in Aries. So with the full moon, it's it's time to release. Okay, so like I was saying, like with this with judgment and all that, it's time to release any potential judgment that you're feeling. It's time to Take a deep breath and just let go of that pent-up energy, the stress. Really focus on removing stress from your life. Um, with the fiery climax approaches, I feel like when you can take this time, this fiery climax really, I feel, ties in well with this transformation into this moth or this butterfly. It is the culmination of this commitment that you're making but again you need to be able to step into this more grounded energy release the the tension release the anxiety the fears this month this coming July I really feel is going to be you listening to yourself and a lot of it just being listening to your physical body stretching if you need to meditating taking breaths just listening to yourself and trusting that your body does know what's right your body does know what it needs but if you are not listening to your body then you won't hear that advice okay and then we have an affirmation card, which I hope you will be able to take with you this month and use it to reach your goals, your dreams, whatever you have set out for this month ahead. So it says, when I live and act from a place of spiritual alignment, 
I can trust that everything is working out for me, even if I don't know when or how it will happen. Yeah. And like I was saying, it's, it's about removing this judgment, trusting yourself, trusting your body, trusting spirit, and trusting that things will work out even if you don't quite understand how yet. Okay? So that is your reading. If you picked pile number one for the energies surrounding this coming July. If you enjoyed this reading, please hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. I do have Zodiac specific readings for July coming up over the next few days. So if you want to see that, those will be coming up. Love, light, and happiness to all of you. Have a fantastic day. Bye. Hello, pile number two. Hello to all of you who picked the natural agate. So the natural agate is an earth stone. Astrologically speaking, it is associated with Venus. Um, agate is a very grounding stone, as it is an earth stone. It's a stone that is great to be used if you're feeling um, anxiety or if you're feeling um, stressed. If you want to be able to trust yourself, trust your... Um, just connecting with your higher self as well. Natural agate may be a good stone for you to add to your collection or to carry around with you. Okay, so we have a collection of tarot and oracle cards today and we're going to start with your tarot cards. First off we have the seer and then we have the four of vessels which is boredom, the sun of life, wow powerful cards already. Woodward and the Queen of Bows, the hair. Okay. Interesting. It's almost like you're feeling stagnant in your in your spirituality, in your personal growth, your personal development. I almost feel like, you know, oh I've been reading all of the personal development books, but I just can't just can't grasp it. I can't get ahead. I can't do something. There's a lot of excuses. I'm feeling, um, especially around this four of vessels, but I mean, your rest of the, the cards, the seer, the son of life, the woodward, the queen of bows, it's so interesting, like this card here, the natural agate, this was about anxiety and about trusting yourself, and that's exactly what your tarot cards are saying. It's almost like this July, you need to get in touch with yourself. You need to get in touch with your higher self, your spiritual side. Um, with the seer here, you guys may have some psychic abilities that it would be beneficial for you to uh, tap into, listening to your intuition, seeing your own personal strength and your own personal power. Um, this might also be you being bored within your spiritual life like you haven't felt excited about it for a while and it's almost like this July there might be some kind of information or something that's going to become available to you something that's going to spark your interest what you get which will get you out of this boredom phase um, I feel like this might be a new topic of interest or something that you're just going to start um, connecting with this could even be um, with the summer coming about when I'm filming this, it is actually the summer solstice, so happy summer solstice to all of you. Um, this could even just be being able to get out into nature and enjoying nature and embracing it, you know, shedding the boredom that has been, you know, the past six months, the winter, and then the quarantine and, and all of that, um, if you're in the southern hemisphere, you're actually moving into winter. Um, so this could be, you know, taking more time for you indoors, taking more time to connect with yourself. Whereas if you're in the northern hemisphere, this might be more connecting with the natural environment. Okay, um, let's pull your oracle cards. Higher power. <laughs> 
and a leg up. Yeah, it's this leg up, it's almost like you are going to be connecting with someone or something that will kind of give you a push, a boost into this kind of energy, this very strong, powerful, trusting yourself kind of energy. It's almost like the leg up is what's going to help you see this sun, um, the sun of life power within you. Um, the queen of bows here, she's actually a very powerful woman, a very fertile woman. But if you look at her, she almost looks scared. She almost looks nervous about the situation. And I feel like that's very much your energy for a lot of you. You might be getting kind of insights into where you may be going spiritually and you're not trusting yourself. You're afraid of what direction this might lead. This could also be you connecting with yourself on a spiritual level when you were raised in a community or a religion that really had misinterpretations about what the spiritual community is and has to offer. So while you're being drawn to the spiritual community, you might feel hesitation because of preconceived notions from the opinions of others and the opinions around you when you were growing up, okay? Um, if that is the case, it is definitely time to reach out to people that you feel comfortable with, reach out to communities who you feel um, you align with, and be able to talk through those fears with people. Let's pull your Moonology card. Nothing will come of this situation. Void, of course, moon. Yeah, if you, if you just ignore the path that you're feeling drawn to, if you just sit in this boredom, then nothing will come of the situation. If you are feeling like you can't connect with the spiritual side, if you're feeling like you can't trust your higher self, trust the higher power, then nothing will come of it. Life will remain the same. But if this is something that you want to look into, if this is something that you are feeling drawn to, then take the steps, okay? If you can't do it right now, then nothing will come of it. You have to take the action. You have to put in the work. Um, you know, just people don't become awakened and learn everything they need to know overnight, right? I mean, does anyone ever n know everything they need to know? It's not, it's not possible. We can never learn everything we need to know in this life. But if you don't trust yourself to go after that information, if you don't trust yourself to be able to learn what you need to learn, if you don't trust yourself to test out the knowledge that you have gained, then nothing will come of the situation. Okay? So, I feel like for you guys this, this July really big decision as to whether you are staying in this energy or whether you are going to expand your consciousness. If you choose to go down the spiritual path, if you choose to embrace your spirituality, um, perhaps your intuitive psychic nature, then things will start happening. Things, opportunities will be presented to you. But if you don't if you don't choose to go down that path, if you choose to ignore it, then nothing will come of the situation, okay? So you guys actually have two affirmation cards, and I pulled these because I just wanted you to have a little affirmation that will hopefully help you as you go through this month. So the first one is, the universe has big plans for me, and it's time to claim them. What was I saying? Nothing will come of the situation if you don't claim them. It's time to claim them, okay? And then we have, I can decide today to recalibrate my energy and commit to love and joy, okay? So those are your two affirmations. If you picked group number two, pile number two, I really want you to look deep within and spend time with yourself this July. Really figure out what it is that you want what will bring you happiness? What will bring you fulfillment? Okay, 
that's your that's your task for this next month. If you want to see a more zodiac specific version of this reading for July 2020, those readings will be up in the next couple of days. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you want notification for when those readings go live, you'll have to hit the bell. Love, light, and happiness to all of you. Have a fantastic day. Bye, guys. Hello to all of you who picked pile number three with the blue howlite. So blue howlite is a water stone. Astrologically speaking, it is associated with Scorpio. Um, blue, blue, bleh. <laughs> blue howlite is associated with helping us focus on our potential. It helps us to feel like we can make a good impression um, pushes us to be the best version of ourselves. So if you feel like this month, if you need a little bit of a pick-me-up, a little bit of encouragement um, to be the best version of yourself, Blue Highlight might be a crystal you want to look into working with. So we have a combination of tarot and oracle cards today. We'll be starting with your tarot cards. So we have the Shaman. The Eight of Bows, which is Hearthfire. The Nine of Stones, which is Tradition. The Five of Bows, which is Empowerment. And the Ten of Bows, which is Responsibility. That's interesting. I'm feeling a lot of ancestral vibe, a lot of ancestral knowledge with this pile. Feeling like July is going to be a time for you to connect with your ancestors, um, especially if you're feeling disassociated, if you're feeling like you don't fit in, if you're feeling alone, try looking into your ancestry, whether this is doing actual like genealogy work and tracing your ancestral lineage, or whether this is more of a mystical experience and connecting with your ancestors through meditation or through um, like dream states. I do feel like connecting with your ancestors and being able to root yourself in the traditions of your family, of your ancestry, will really help you moving forward, will really help you understand who you are, and maybe help you understand a little bit more about your purpose on this planet. It'll help you. It'll help to empower you to take to take pride in yourself and to reach your full potential. We have the shaman, which is also the magician in a traditional Rider Waite deck. So this is taking control of your own personal power, being a creator, taking the steps to reach your dreams, and combining that with the empowerment and the responsibility. I really do feel like July is going to be a very transformative month in terms of helping you move forward in terms of who you are what you're capable of, and where you want to go in the future. Um, it's almost like you're setting out a roadmap as to where you want to take your life. By looking back, you can almost see forward more. Um, with the hearth fire here, this is connecting with family, with friends. This could be literal you know, taking time to hear stories from your grandparents, talking to relatives, but it could also just be, you know, embracing community because, um, you know, like our ancestry, our heritage, quite often our ancestors lived in close-knit communities. You know, you relied on your community. So it's almost like what is your community now and how can you embrace that aspect of community? But this could also be, you know, meditating like in front of a candle, like using a, a flame 
to get into a deeper trance-like state of meditation and being able to connect with your ancestors that way. Um, with traditions, it's also interesting because when I'm filming this, it's actually the summer solstice. So, um, you know, like there's, there's a lot of tradition that goes along with the summer solstice and there's actually, um, they were streaming the, the sunset at Stonehenge today, um, which this totally made me think of that. So this might be connecting, you know, like Stonehenge, when was that built? Like that is such, um, an ancient structure. So maybe it's time to connect back with those roots um, connect back with what makes you feel connected to the earth, to the planet, okay? Um, we have the card of not for you, and then the card of fork in the road, okay? This is not for you. I instantly heard what is your ancestry. So often we will look at cultures and traditions because they are, say, glamorized or because um, things draw us in, but they're not necessarily our culture. They're not necessarily our tradition. So I feel like this month, it's really, you really need to focus on what is your ancestral tradition? What has your family done? Where is your lineage? Where does that take you? Um, it's not about someone else's culture. It's about connecting with your own. And this fork in the road, I mean, if we just look at our grandparents, that's four different ancestries that we could be connected to, right? You have your maternal lineage, and then you have your paternal lineage. You have, you know, your, your mom has both paternal and maternal lineage. So there's so many different cultures that you can go down and they might not all lead to the same place. You might realize you're a mutt, you're a mix of different cultures. And it's not about just going after one. It's how can you merge all of those traditions to become the person that you are? You know, it's how can you connect all of those different paths into the story that is you. Okay? So your, um, your moonology card says your hard work is paying off. New moon in Capricorn. Yeah. So this, you know, this may take some, some work. It may be hard work tracing your ancestry. You may already know your ancestry. Um, but it's time to put in the hard work. It's time to connect with this. Um, it's time to connect with who you feel like you are deep down within and seeing the power that your ancestors can lend you. Okay. And then we have an affirmation card and I pulled this to help give you um, an, an affirmation that you can hopefully say throughout the month to empower you and to keep going. Okay? When I merge my desire with faith, I can take action from a place of peace rather than control. Okay? So that may resonate with some of you. I feel like um, when we were talking about empowerment and responsibility here, that is taking action from a place of peace rather than control. It's empowering yourself to go after what you want to do, trusting um, or taking charge of your responsibilities, owning your responsibilities, and going forward with confidence and, and courage and self-love, really. Okay? So that is your message for July 2020. If you want a more zodiac specific version of this reading, the zodiac signs will be going up over the next couple of days. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you want notifications for when those videos go up, you'll have to hit the bell icon. Okay? Love, light, and happiness to all of you. Have a fantastic day. Bye, Pile 3. 
Hello to all of you who picked pile number four with the sodalite. So sodalite is an earth stone. It's a grounding stone. Um, astrologically, it is associated with Capricorn. So I am not actually familiar with sodalite, so I have the little book here. And ideas for meditation. Sodalite helps us to develop idealism and spirituality. So sodalite helps in situations of stress and anxiety. It reinforces a sense of identity and bestows, a, it bestows optimism towards life and openness towards new situations. Okay? So that is sodalite. Now onto your reading. We have a combination of tarot and oracle cards. We're going to start with your tarot cards. So you have the Page of Arrows, which is the Wren, the King of Vessels, which is the Heron, the Ancestor, the Knight of Vessels, which is the Eel, and the King of Bows, which is the Adder. Very interesting. I love that. It, like, so we've got the two birds, and we've got, I mean, we have a fish and the snakes, but they, they both have the same body shape. Hmm. Very interesting. Let me pull up that soda light again. Okay. Situations of stress and anxiety reinforces a sense of identity and bestows optimism towards life and openness towards new situations. It's very interesting. So the new situations. Um... I'm really focused here because we have the adders here and they're in this ball, whether they're waking up from spring and they're warming each other or whether this is a mating ball, like a courting situation here. But we also have the eels and the eels really, tra um, they travel downstream when it is time to spawn. So it's like this is, this is new situations, new circumstances. It's almost like this July is going to be opening you up to new opportunities. And with the two birds, I always always think of birds as having, you know, the bird's eye perspective, seeing the bigger picture. We have the wren, which is about um, transitions. We are moving into spring from the winter on this card. It's about seeing the new opportunities, the new life that is emerging. But we also have the heron, and a heron I always associate with wisdom, with knowledge. And with the ancestor here, again, it's kind of wrapping it up. It's, it's interesting energy. It's very reminiscent of what I was just telling Pile 3. Um, I was talking about connecting with ancestral wisdom, but not only like one path, because you have so many ancestors. Even just looking at your grandparents, you've got four different ancestral paths to go down, right? And it's almost like we've got this balance of male and female energy here. Very, very masculine energy here with the birds and then very feminine energy with the snakes, even though these are the king and knights, I'm still feeling very feminine energy from the snakes here, um, or the snake figures, um, because both of these cards, I really do feel like they... They represent very fertile energy and not even fertile in terms of like families and having babies, but just fertile in terms of new ideas and knowledge and, um, you know, creating ideas, your imagination. Let's pull your oracle cards. I might actually pull some clarifiers for you. So we have the card of Regeneration and of Blessed. Yeah, very similar energy to the last pile about, you know, coming, coming to terms with who you are and connecting with who you are. Coming to terms might not be the right way to say it because it's like, I mean, you always are who you are. But it's embracing who you are and being empowered with who you are. And it's almost like you're going to be over, like, 
yeah, the snakes here, I mentioned like coming out after hibernation in the spring, feeling warmth, and then we have the regeneration. It's almost like you're transitioning into um, a new phase of life this July. Something, I really want to say something big is happening, but I'm going to pull some clarifiers for you. But again, it's a very blessed situation. It's very positive. Um, and I mean, we, all, we have all court cards and the ancestor. So again, this is very positive, very strong energy. Um, let me... Okay. Can we clarify the ancestor, please? And you guys, when I was shuffling this, like, uh, literally a stack of cards, like, just popped right out. So, um, I think I put some messages back, but I was just like, I can't read 20 cards. <laughs> okay, there you go. King of Cups. We have the King of Cups. Okay. And the Sun. The last group had the Sun, too, I think. At the Son of Life. Or was that two groups ago? I don't remember. Hmm. Yeah, this is you stepping into your own personal power this month. It's almost like you're coming out of, of a period of darkness. Um, perhaps even depression. Actually, let me pull your Moonology card. Meditate and contemplate. New Moon in Pisces. A new moon is, you know, it's about new beginnings, new phases. Meditate and contemplate. That really speaks with the ancestors. It is time to focus on you, the King of Swords. Yeah. You guys are stepping into your power, or you have the opportunity to step into your power this month. There are great things coming for you, but it's like you have to be able to see them. You have to be able to trust your instincts to go with the flow. You With this eel, it's like you can't fight the river. You have to either go with it or you have to get above to be able to see the whole situation. But if you allow, if you allow this transformation to happen this month, then you will really be stepping into a new level of confidence and it's almost like a new sense of identity will be coming to you, just like the sodalite was saying. Yeah, like reinforces a sense of identity and this is optimism towards life and openness towards new situations. That really is the energy that I'm feeling you're stepping into. Pull one more tarot card for you. <laughs> the bottom of the deck is the Queen of Cups. Yeah, okay. So you <laughs> one turned into four. The Two of Cups. The Six of Pentacles. The Five of Swords. And the Page of Swords. Yeah, I mean, you're going to be fighting for what you want this month. It's not going to be an easy transition. I don't want to lie to you. It's not going to be like, oh, look, July is here. And now, you know, we've got this wonderful sense of confidence. And we're feeling all this bright and happy energy. Um, it, it's, it's going to be a fight. You're going to have to work for it. Um, you're going to have to show up. But there is this positive energy that is just going to be surrounding you. Um, if you've been feeling really down, really weighed down, depressed, sad, even angry, I really do feel a transition coming this July. It's like you're going to be inspired to go down a new direction, a new road. You're going to see something that changes your opinion about the circumstances surrounding you, okay? But you do have to be willing to listen, 
Listen to your guides, to your spirit, to your intuition. Listen to yourself. Okay? And then the last card I have for you, pile number four, is an affirmation card. And I hope that this affirmation will be able to um, help you through this month. Okay? So it says, each time I choose to tune into spirit, guidance of the highest truth shows up for me. Yeah. Um, I think I think this is very key. It says, each time I choose to turn into spirit, this is this is a choice. This shift of energy is a choice. Okay? You can choose to remain in a state where you feel like you're fighting, where you feel like you just can't get ahead. Or you can choose to face those fears and see the opportunities that are available to you. This might involve a lot of, like this card said here, this meditate and contemplate. It might involve you learning to calm your mind to be able to see past what it is that you are going through. Okay. We have the the run here, the transition out of the depths of winter, the darkness of winter, and into the light of spring. Okay, we had the adders emerging from their hibernation ball, and the eel going downstream to to spawn and to start this new journey. All being watched by the heron and the ancestors. You are being supported. You are being guided by the universe, by your ancestors, by your spirit. Um, but you need to trust it, and you need to work with it as opposed to against it, okay? So that is your message. If you picked pile number four, if you want to see a more Zodiac-specific version, it might give you some more insight on the situation. Those videos will be coming up over the next couple of days. Um, hit the subscribe button, and if you hit the bell, you'll be notified when those videos go up, okay? Uh, your rising sign, your ascendant, will be the most accurate for you, but you can also watch your sun and your moon sign for even more information. Love, light, and happiness to all of you. Have a fantastic day. My pile number four. Hello to all of you who picked pile number five with the jade. Jade is a water stone, and astrologically speaking, it is associated with Venus. Um, jade is a stone that helps to open the mind. Um, it is a stone of renewal, has calming properties, soothing properties. Um, it also, it's also a great stone for balancing emotions. Okay. So we have a combination of tarot and oracle cards. We are going to start with your tarot cards. So we have the Ten of Stones, which is home. The Ace of Stones, which is the foundations of life. The World Tree. The Page of Stones, which is the links. The Mirror. And the Guardian. Okay. Um, the biggest message I'm getting right away, pile number five, is where do you even want to go? What is your version of home long term? Um, what is your, like, what are your goals? What are your aspirations long term? It is time to start setting down the foundations for where you want to go. But in order to get to wherever you want to go, you need to understand where that is. Okay? Um, between the Page of Stones and the Mirror, it's almost like you're, even the Guardian, it's almost like you've been flip-flopping potentially between two ideas. Um, whether this is not knowing the physical location you want to end up, not knowing what your career goals might be, um, not feeling like you will ever settle down in terms of a relationship even. Um, now, I'm not saying you need to, you know, have concrete wedding plans or buy a house or any of that, but it's almost like you just need to think about the future. 
plan for the future? What does the future look like? Um, not even so much like the actual place or the actual people involved, but more so like what are the foundations of that? What is your routine? What does your day-to-day -day kind of look like? Do you even want like a nine-to-five job or do you want something with more freedom? Do you want to be able to travel? Um, do you want a home in the country versus by the ocean versus in the mountains? You know, like you don't have to be like, okay, this is the house that I want. This is the career that I want. But more generalized in thinking kind of like of a bigger picture, the bigger 360 of what your life might look like in five years, in 10 years. Um, I feel like July will really be you listening to yourself, listening to to your emotions, feeling confident in the choices that you're making. And I mean, these choices can change. Our opinions always change. But I feel like it's good to get the ball rolling and start thinking about these things now. With the world tree here, we have all the seasons. We've got spring, summer, fall, winter. So this isn't, you know, expecting things to happen. You know, if you start a project in July, don't expect to be a millionaire by the end of July. What are tangible, long-term solutions or goals that you can set? You know, what are, what's your, what's your five-year goal? What's your 10-year goal? The things that you're putting in place now, the structures, the foundations you're putting in place now will help you to reach those goals in the, in the future. So often we think of things being instant, you know, because Amazon has next day delivery or even same day delivery in some places. Um, we can find information at the tips of our fingers on our smartphones. But I mean, not everything works that quickly, right? If you want to be the CEO of a company, you might need to start in a lower spot. You're not going to be a CEO tomorrow, but you could get an entry-level position in that company, which will open doors for you in the future. Okay? This July, it is about setting the foundations for the future and understanding where you even want to go. Okay? We have time for a nap and a change in the wind. Um, very interesting energy there, a change in the wind, especially with this mirror card. Um, even the guardian here, it's like you've got the two sides to every story. You've got the, um, the physical world and the spiritual world. You've got life and death. Like There's always a change in the wind. The mirror is about looking at the reflection. Sometimes what you see in the reflection is not um, what there is to see. What Sometimes it's not everything there is to see. The reflection is a very limited viewpoint, right? So look past the mirror, look past the um, the physical proof in front of you. You know, I'm sure you've heard it before. I've never seen a million dollars, but I know it exists, right? How do you know it exists? There's all sorts of proof that a million dollars exists, even though you've never seen it in cash in front of you. So it's that change of perspective of, well, I've never seen this. I've never experienced this, so it will never happen to me. It's like, no, it can happen to you. You can trust that it can. Um, with this time for a nap card, I'm feeling like it is just, again, it's understanding that that time needs to pass. Sometimes we need to take time for ourselves. We need to sleep. We need, you know, the expression to sleep on it, too. Um, not rush into things. I feel like you guys have been rushing and rushing and rushing, and it's time to slow down. Um, a lynx, I don't know, are they fast creatures? I'm not sure. Whenever I have seen lynx, they're calm, they're stealthy, like they're, they're observing everything, and they're being very quiet. Um, and, you know, they're observing their prey. <laughs> you know, their prey doesn't see them, but they see their prey. They're watching their prey. They're going for it, right? They're very smart creatures. Um, and they also understand that if they act too quickly, if they act in haste, they might miss the opportunity. So then we have the end of a, a tough cycle approaches, full moon in Capricorn. Full moons are all about release. It's this change of is change in the wind. It's this 
it's the change of the change of season with the world tree and it's just change of perspective with this mirror card your physical life might not change but how you see the world around you how you see your circumstances how you see your situation may be what's changing this July okay and with the jade the jade talked about uh, balancing emotions right and it's talking about um, you know it's about calming and soothing properties and I feel like that is very very much the energy you need to step into very um, responsive energy versus reactive based energy when you see something happen it's not about acting on it instantly you'll know, take the time calm the emotions and make a more logic based decision versus an emotional based decision okay so this July for you pile number five is really about slowing down and taking the steps to see the bigger picture long term okay and then the last two cards we have are affirmations and I hope that these will help you as you move throughout the month as soon as I choose to see the light in the darkest corner, I redirect my power towards what I want. The end of a tough cycle approaches. Nothing might actually change. It is your perspective that is changing. So if you feel like you have a hard time changing your perspective, this would be a perfect affirmation for you. As soon as I choose to see the light in the darkest corners, I redirect my power towards what I want. You don't even have to say as soon as I choose, you or as soon as. You can just say, I choose to see the light in the darkest corners. I redirect my powers towards what I want. And then you have, I accept that good things come easily. I am a super attractor. So those are your messages. If you picked pile number five with the jade. If you want to see the Zodiac version of this July 2020 reading, those videos will be coming up over the next couple of days. If you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification beside it, you will be notified when those videos go up. Love, light, and happiness to all of you. Have a fantastic day. Bye.